We're back into the second part of our lesson on spiritism and mediums. I'm going to start off this second lesson quoting Dr. Martin from his book, The Kingdom of the Cults. Dr. Walter Martin writes, Modern spiritism had its birth as far as most church historians are concerned. On March 31st, 1848, on that day, Mrs. John Fox of Hydesville, New York, heard peculiar noises in the upstairs rooms and cellar of her home. Margaret and Kate Fox seemed to be peculiarly sensitive to these noises, and through this sensitivity, they developed into mediums, and their communications became known as, quote, the Rochester Wrappings. Now, if you... Um, go ahead and you go to your favorite search engine and you type in shrine or museum and you type in uh, shrine museum Lily Dale New York and that's two words Lily and Dale New York uh, you're going to come to find out that that's where really the the center of spiritism is right now uh, there's a, somewhat of a museum there there's a cottage that apparently there in that city if you go to their website, you come to find out, as I did recently, that they're uh, a 501c3. And interestingly enough, they're a 501c3 religious organization. How about that? Uh, you can see on their website, you can uh, purchase tickets to attend a, a conference and, I guess, seminars and other things like that. Also, there is a plaque that is on the cottage home. Uh, as you make your way to the entrance. And the plaque reads, and I quote, There is no death. There is no death. Well, that's interesting because my Bible says that the wages of sin is death. But beside the point, there is no death. Spiritists will say that Deuteronomy 18, which I read to you in our last lesson, is a lie. And they will tell you it's a lie because they will tell you they don't call up the dead since there is no death. Martin continues on. He writes uh, concerning the revival of modern spiritism. He says, it is interesting to note that spiritism has made its strongest appeal to those who have suffered great loss and after each great war. Spiritism always seems to be on the upgrade following the death of loved ones. And that is true. That is the occult's appeal. In particular, this particular occult practice known as spiritism and mediums. That is the appeal because we miss the ones who have passed away. Whether it's a spouse that we dearly love, or a parent, or perhaps a child, or a sibling, or a sweet aunt and uncle, or a uh, uh, grandmother or grandfather, that individual passes away, we remember the good times, we remember the holidays, we remember the, the, the opening up of the presents and the cookouts and all of these things, and now that person's gone. And as the old saying goes, nature abhors a vacuum. And so there's a vacuum that's left in our lives, and it hurts. And we cry. And we mourn. Spiritism, though, comes along and preaches that physically they may have gone. Physically you may not see them anymore, but they really haven't left yet. That's what Spiritism teaches. There is no death. And so physically you don't see your loved ones, but they're still here some kind of way. And they're watching over us. They're always there. You may not actually see your loved ones, but your loved ones are still with you. And isn't that comforting? Well, it may be comforting, but is it biblically accurate? And that is where we need to search the scriptures to see if that's an accurate statement. Our loved ones aren't physically there anymore, but they really haven't left us. Is that biblically accurate? Or is that a lie? We are told in the scriptures, do not lean on your own understanding. 
Do not lean on your emotions. Don't lean on your feelings. Don't lean on your own heart. Don't give in to your heart because your heart will deceive you. Your heart will lie to you. And we so we need something that will speak to us, not that will cater to our feelings and not that will cater to our emotions. We need something that will speak of certainties and not just wishful thinking. We need something that will speak with authority. Your heart, your feelings do not speak with authority. We need something that provides true comfort and gives us something that we can trust. We need more than just sincere sympathy and concern, as wonderful as sympathy and concern is. We need something that is authoritative as well as comforting, and that can only be found in the scriptures. Your heart will lie to you. The word of God never will, and it will never change. And so we go back to the word of God. 1 Thessalonians 4, beginning in verse 13, Paul writes, But we do not want you to be uninformed brethren. So he's speaking to believers. We do not want you to be uninformed brethren about those who are asleep, those who have passed away, so that you will not grieve as do the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Yeshua died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Yeshua. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Messiah will rise first, then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Is Paul here describing the rapture? Yes, that's exactly what he's describing. He is writing about a rapture, and he's writing about the rapture, the catching up of the saints of the believers. Now, is there going to be a snatching up as well uh, of those who are lost. Yes, that comes in later on. But right now, in 1 Thessalonians 4, he's concentrating on those who have already passed away and they accepted Yeshua before they died. He's writing about those who have already died and he uses the term fallen asleep. That doesn't mean soul sleep. It means the body has passed. The body has died. The spirit and the soul continue to live. Your spirit and your soul do not sleep. The body goes to sleep. And the term is, uh, is, was used, uh, certainly, 2,000 years ago. It was well known that when somebody had mentioned that somebody was falling asleep, like Lazarus, he's sleeping. That that simply meant that that person had died. The organs had stopped. The heart had stopped. You know, the brain waves, everything. The person is dead. So think of it, the body goes to sleep. Does that body, when you go to sleep, let's say at night, do you know exactly when you'll wake up? Well, you don't know when you'll wake up until what? An alarm clock goes off. When they lay the body down, your body down and my body down, we will not know when that trumpet is sounded. But it will. The clock will go off. Paul is saying, do not sorrow as those who have no hope. Why? Look at verse 14. For if we believe that Yeshua died and rose again, and here's the key phrase, even so God will bring with him, even so God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Yeshua. Now wait a minute. What did Spiritism just teach us? Well, there is no death, and that the, the spirits, are our lost loved ones, they're still with us. Well, according to 1 Thessalonians 4, they're not with us. Where are the spirits of those believers who have died right now? They've died. My mother, she passed away. That was 2018. Where is she? Is she still with me? Does she have these angel's wings and she's watching over me? And she... That's not what Paul says. The spiritists will tell you that they are with you. But that is not what verse 14 says. How about 2 Corinthians 5, verses 6 to 8? Paul writes there, Therefore being always of good courage, and knowing that while we are at home in the body, 
we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are of good courage, I say, and prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be at home with the Lord. At home with the Lord. So if if that is what Paul is saying, is that I would rather be at home and when the when the person when the believer dies they go to be they go to be with Yeshua they go to, to be with the Lord well then obviously Paul is not would, certainly wouldn't let Timothy know at some later time hey just to let you know I'll help you out you know I may be about to be executed here as he writes in Second Timothy I may be executed but don't you worry I'll still be behind you no no that's not the case it may be but what Timothy would have liked to have heard. It's what we all would like to hear. My husband, who has passed away, and I loved him so dearly. My wife, all those years, she was such a wonderful mother to our to our children. My parents, who cared for me, and I, I so appreciate and everything. I would love for to think that they're right behind me, always watching over me. But that's not what your Bible teaches. Philippians 1, verse 23, But I am hard-pressed, Paul says, from both directions, having the desire to depart and be with Yeshua, be with Messiah, for that is very much better. So what is it? Are we going to lean on our own understanding and our own emotions and to fall prey to what the Spiritists are telling us? Or are we going to listen to the Scriptures? Are the spiritists telling us the truth, or is the Apostle Paul telling us the truth? Or, there was some, maybe maybe there are some believers who would love to have it both ways. Well, maybe the spiritists have a point, and the Apostle Paul has a point. And so, maybe my mom, who knows, she passed away in 2018, well, maybe she hops on the E-train. And she hops on the E-train, and she leaves heaven, and she comes to earth, and she watches over me, and she she's caring for me, and, and trying to keep me out of trouble. And then when, you know, her time is done, and, and everything, she looks at her watch, and she hops on the H-train, and she heads back up to heaven again, and she, and she kind of goes back and forth. Maybe that's where we're, where we're going. Does your Bible teach you that? No. On the contrary, the scripture is very clear. Luke 16, verse 26. There is a great chasm, Yeshua says. There is a great gulf that is fixed between the living and the dead. And so, no. You cannot, you cannot contact your dead loved ones who are with Yeshua right now. If your loved ones have passed on, you cannot reach out to them. And God knows that. And he warned Israel, do not do that. Don't give in to the spiritists. Don't give in to the mediums. Don't call up the dead. Because you can't. Do not reach out to them. And he makes that very specific. And God knows, if you try, if you try to reach out to them, I want to talk to Grandma. I want to talk to Grandma. I miss them so much. Maybe they can comfort me. Maybe they can tell me something. The Lord knows as soon as you try to leave this dimension, the dimension in which we live in, and you try to reach out of this dimension into another dimension where your loved ones are, you're not going to be able to hit that dimension. Instead, you're going to tap into another dimension. And that dimension is demonic. And the demons will be waiting. And God knows it. And the demons will give you exactly what you want. You want to talk to grandma? They will mimic grandma. You want to talk to your sister? They will go ahead and mimic your sister. And they will deceive you. Here are some quotes from their own publications, the Spiritism, their own, their own periodicals. Quote, It is an absurd idea that Jesus was any more divine than any other man. Here's another one. Quote, The miraculous conception of Christ is merely a fabulous tale. Here's another one. Quote, Your doctrine of the atonement 
is the very climax of a deranged imagination and one that is of the unrighteous and immoral tendency, end quote. And so as we close this second and final part to our look at spiritism and mediums, spiritism at its core is anti-Bible. It denies the triune Godhead. Spiritism denies the deity of Yeshua. Spiritism denies the virgin birth. Spiritism denies the atonement. Spiritism denies the very bodily resurrection of Yeshua. And Spiritism denies salvation by grace through faith. And they make it very bold, and they don't hide it. In fact, they put it on a plaque. There is no death when there is death. They're lying. They're lying, and it's so sad there are some believers who actually fall for it and are dabbling in it. So that's first off. Secondly, even though there are magicians that are out there, and believe me, the hand is quicker than the eye. I mean, I did see David Copperfield one time. I I think, uh, what was it? He made an elephant disappear. Or did he? Okay? There are magicians that are out there, but the scriptures prove that the real cult of spiritism calls upon the demonic realm for power. The medium at Endor, that's what she was known for. That's what she was best at. She tapped into the demonic world. And one day, God intervened and brought up Samuel. And Samuel actually spoke. Thirdly, Understand that people who willfully practice spiritism, and I mean willfully practice it, are willfully ignorant of the teachings of the Bible. They're willfully ignorant. But lastly, if you know someone, if you know someone who is dabbling in spiritism, and they're not willfully practicing it, they've been deceived, they've been lied to, They don't know the truth. Maybe they don't know their Bibles well enough. They haven't studied their Bibles well enough. They go to a church where the Bible's not being taught properly. And they're just being deceived. And and these people are, are, they love the Lord, but they've been lied to. You and I have a responsibility. And that responsibility is to share the truth with them. And we do so out of love. Be bold. Be forthright. You, you don't don't try to, to sugarcoat it, but we tell the truth and we speak the truth and we give it in love. Caring for a brother, caring for a sister. When someone has lost somebody, and someone's very dear, and it's usually like a spouse, and you've been together for so long and you've shared so many memories and sh- so many good times, and now that person is gone, somebody can be deceived so easily. And we have to care for these people and give them the truth. And we do so out of love. Remember, spiritism is a cult of antiquity. But its motivating force is Satan. It's the cult of antiquity, but its motivating force is Satan and his cohort. Do not take part in lies. Do not take part in lies. That's what Adam did. Eve was deceived. You remember exactly what Satan told Eve on that day in that garden. You surely will not die. That was a lie. And Eve was deceived. Adam, on the other hand, knew exactly what he got himself into. He knew the truth. He knew that was a lie. And he took part in the lie. Do not take part in lies. Spiritism and what they preach is a lie. From, from pillar to post, everything that they speak and everything that they proclaim, these spiritists, these mediums, it's all a lie. And what did Yeshua say about Satan in John 8, verse 44? Talking about Satan, he was a murderer. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Whenever he speaks a lie... He speaks from his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies.